ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All praises are due to Almighty Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. We bear witness there is no God to be worshipped except Almighty Allah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to Islam. Alhamdulillah wa kafa biha nama. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protecting us day and night. We thank Him for all His blessings upon us day and night. We send our blessing to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom Allah sent to the mercy to all humanity. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, my topic to you today is two parts. One of them, the first part would be about uh, our readiness for the next life, inshallah, and the other part is our readiness for this coming year, 2024, inshallah. And my topic will be based on the list of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu qala akhadha rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi mankibi faqala kun fi dunya ka anna ka garib aw abiru sabeel wa kana ibn Umar radiallahu anhu yakul idha amsayta fala tantadiru sabah wa idha asbahta fala tantadiru nusa wa khud min sihatika li maradik ومن حياتك لموتك رواه البخاري في كتاب الرقاب. Before I begin the explanation of the hadith, let me just give you the translation. Ibn Umar رضي الله عنه said that one day he was walking with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tapped him on his shoulder and he said to him, O Abdullah ibn Umar, كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب. Be in this life as if you are a stranger. Be in this land as if you are a stranger. Or either a civilian or a passerby who is a traveler. Either a civilian is one this person one, one village of one city going to another village to last destination. And Ibn Morris took it very seriously. And then he said to himself and to people who are around him, either as Bahta Fala Tantadar Nusa. When you are alive in the morning, don't expect that you're going to be alive in the evening. either I'm Satan, Fala and And when you are alive in the evening, don't expect that you're going to be alive in the in the morning. And subhanAllah, some of us may be thinking that this is just too much. How are we going to enjoy our life if every minute we are thinking of this uh, next life? However, as we have seen all of us nowadays, subhanAllah, death is something that we cannot escape. And brothers and sisters in Islam, I am not trying to terrify you or telling you something that I want to terrify you, not at all. It's just a reminder. It's just a reminder. If we look into what is happening nowadays, we have so many people dying every day, every minute. And I'll give you some examples. Just imagine what is going on in Palestine every day. One day they may be killed 800, or another day they may be killed 1,000. And that it was in Palestine. See what is happening in Ukraine. Every day they are killing one another. And this is man-made war. Man-made war. Not somebody imposes on us. We impose it on ourselves. And people are dying every day. Now, some of us may be thinking, oh my God, that is Ukraine, that is Palestine. Then what happens here in the United States, what you call road rage, road rage. People killing one another on the road, maybe because somebody pressed on the phone, maybe somebody runs after one another, and the other guy was so angry, they're coming down and shooting him. SubhanAllah. I remember a few months ago, I was taking my friend, his name is Adam, to the mosque. And I dropped him, I wanted to drop him at his house, not far from my house. And then somebody was behind us, and I made a right turn, and he was angry that I was not running fast enough. But the house is next house to the tunnel, so I could not run. Then he came out so angry 
And then my friend too, <laughs> he was also very angry. I told him, brother, don't, don't worry, let him go. And then he said, brother, uh, please don't worry, next time we will not drive so much. Subhanallah, road rage, we rapes, we kill one another, subhanallah. Now, then we have accidents. People coming out without any expedition, they didn't, they never reach home or they ne never reach their destination. And then we have people who are dying naturally, and really brothers and sisters, it happens to you. How many funerals do you attend this year? How many funerals you heard about, you couldn't attend the funeral? But maybe you send condolences to the family or somebody sending condolences to you. How about our family who are dying day and night? So therefore, death is inevitable. It's part and parcel of this life. So that is what is happening. But my question to me and to you is, if it happens to them, why can it happen to us? At times we are so heedless. Oh, these people are fighting in close time. We don't have any war here. Oh, these people are in Ukraine. We do not have any war. Oh, I'm a very nice driver. I don't run. I don't get slow. I drive nicely. Subhanallah. But the question is, if it happens to them, then definitely it could happen to us. And some of us are saying, brother, I'm still 30 years old. I'm still 40 years old. I'm too young to die. And then the question is, how many people are dying in the hospital? They are young, there's one age, two days, and everything. And if you want to know the reality, and inshallah, I used to do that once in a while, just take your luggage or whatever you have, go to the cemetery here in the night in Joshua, and see, read the signs on the, the, the uh, head on each grave. Well, I'll be surprised. And that's why Muhammad Zabba is saying to, saying to, the, to us, Zuru al-Makabir, fa'inna hatu dhakiru humun akhira. Visit the graveyards, it reminds you the next one. But how many of us are visiting the graveyard? When you say, brother, let's go to the graveyard, say, oh, well, I don't want to die, so I don't want to visit. By going there, doesn't let you die the same thing. If your time doesn't come, definitely you will not die. So therefore, the prosecutors could in the note and let the interfere mean who for in the who mula ki kum the death that you are running away from it is going to meet you. Thumma to Raduna either Adam and Rabi was shahada. Then after that you'll be all returned back to the Lord of all the world and everything who knows everything, who knows what is apparent and who knows what is hidden. For you know, do come be my kuntum tamam. Then you will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you what you have done in this life. So this is what I am saying in Surah Al Juma, verse 8. So therefore, if it happens to them, then it can happen to us. The other thing, and you too, you know that, and you have done it, is that the Arab is saying, إِذَا حَمَلْتَ إِلَى الْكُبُورِ جَنَازَةً فَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ بَعْدَ حَمْلِهَا مَحْمُولُ If any day you support somebody, you carry somebody to the graveyard, you follow them to the graveyard, and you are talking, you are sending him or her off, don't you recognize that one day they are going to do the same thing for you? Where is our brain? When I take somebody out to the graveyard and I follow him, don't you know that this is my turn? It may come any time. And brothers, who goes to his graveyard by himself? Nobody. Nobody goes to his graveyard and says, oh, I have messages this man. They're going to carry me in my messages man. Oh, I, go. I have this house. They're going to give me there. Nobody goes there by himself. Somebody has to carry him there. Subhanallah. إِذَا حَمَنْتَ إِلَى الْأُمُورِ جَنَزَةً فَعَلَمْ أَنَّكَ بَعْدَ حَمْدِهَا مَحْمُولٌ You recognize that one day will be one day when others are going to take you there. So this is what is, uh, what is happening. And Quran also reminds us in Surah Al-Araf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to us, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ عَجَلٍ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ Everybody, every nation has its own decreed time. When that time comes, 
they are not going to move it forward one minute, they are, going to, they are not going to decrease it one minute. If I do not die today, then it's because, it's because my time has not come. And if everybody plotted to kill me, it won't happen until my time comes. I don't know what I said to me. At times some of us are saying, oh my God, how could 800 people die one minute? How could 1,000 people die one minute? Don't we know now that all these gadgets we have in our house, if the electricity want to shut off one million customers, they just switch off one minute. All one million people, they will not have electricity. Our life is in the hand of Almighty God, and He has sent angel to be in charge. And when that angel switch off, say, take all these lives, one in Nigeria, one in Pakistan, one in Tokyo, one in Kar Kar Karachi, it just take them off. So to do that for Allah is something very, very simple. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, we should not be heedless and thinking that if it happens to them, it will not happen to us. It may happen to us. And once again, I'm not fighting you. This is just a reality. This is just a reality. And then people are saying, how is it going to come? If I had that taken back to Quran says it's going to come to you accidentally when you do not expect it to. I will be so healthy, so nice, so good. I do everything that Islam wants me to do. I say, God, I want to live 100 years. And God says, that's just too much for you. This is the time. And when the angel of the angels of death comes, we normally call him something, but maybe somebody else and say, Sorry, God, can I say to him, you know what? Let me tell my wife. Whether I should board now, I should board two minutes. No. When he says to you, board, you board. When he says, come on, take your luggage and let's go, you have to go. So therefore, we just have to do what you are supposed to do. And therefore, the Prophet says to us in this hadith itself, say, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka when you are in this life and you are alive today, be there and be, prepare yourself as if you are a stranger. You are a stranger. Or you are a traveler. That is, you have a destination. And our destination is the next life. Our destination is the next life. However long we live in this life, believe it or not, it's a very short time. Maybe 50 years, maybe 60 years, maybe 100 years, maybe more than that. But compared to the next life, it's a very short time. So therefore, the Prophet was saying to Abdullah ibn Umar, and he hold on his shoulder, Kun fi dunya ka'ana kakari, be in this life as if you are a stranger. Or Abir Sabir or a traveler. And now, beautiful, whenever the Prophet was told us something, and he wants to give us a great example, Allah has blessed him to what they call Jawami in Kelim, that is, few words which are so impressive, so inclusive that everything could be put into it. Abu Rusabil, or the Kabulim uh, traveler, is a fascinating example. Suppose now, subhanAllah, I want to go to New York, what do I do? I cannot just tell for oh, brother Muhammad Ahmad, I love you, I'm traveling tomorrow. I just take my luggage, go to the airport and say, I'm going to New York. No. What do I do? I make a reservation. I buy a ticket. I know my destination. I'm going to New York. Then I buy a ticket to New York. Then if I go there at the airport and say, sorry, where are you going to say, I don't know. People think, what's wrong with you? <laughs> How could you come from Port Forth? And you don't know your destination. Maybe they call me police and say, maybe this person is sick. So therefore, as a traveler, you make a reservation, you know where you're going, your destination, you make preparation, because you desire the preparation, you have little bit dollars in your hand, and you know where you're going, and then you must be healthy. If I go to the airport and I'm sick, then nobody's going to pick me up. So therefore, if as a traveler I have to make preparation, then the Prophet of Islam said to me, make preparation for this life that is coming. And Quran says, I will not be in our heart. Don't be doubtful at all. This time is going to come. When is what we do not know. When is what we do not know. We do not know. 
So therefore, the first thing then is that as a traveler, you make your nice preparation. You take your ticket, you make your reservation, you know where you're going, and do everything so that when you go there, you're going to be happy. Otherwise, if you do not make a nice reservation, then you pay the price. Then you pay the price. This is what the Hadith is telling us. Kun fi dunya, being disturbed as you're a stranger or you're a passerby who is a traveler. And if you're a traveler, you make all the necessary things that you have to do. Now, Ibn Umar had this from the Prophet then what meaning does he give to it? Then Umar, Ibn Umar says, فَإِذَا أَسْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَزِرُ الْمَسَعَ Part of the preparation is that if you are alive in the morning, think that you may not be alive in the evening. And if you are alive in the evening, think that you may not be alive in the morning. So what you have to do then, you prepare yourself. That if it comes in the morning, alhamdulillah, it comes at night, alhamdulillah. But brothers, let us prepare for it. Let us prepare for it. Now that it's not going to come, yes, it's going to come anytime. In Nama Yati Kumbhakta, it's going to come accidentally. So we just have to prepare for it, inshallah. Ta'ala. And this is something very nice. Then Ibn Mahal says, Wakut min hayati kalimotik wa min sihati kalimarani. When you are healthy now, and alhamdulillah all of us are healthy, when I see you here, you are healthy, that's why you are able to come here. You can walk, you can talk, you can see, you can move, you can do everything you are do, going to do, and that is a sign of your healthiness. You are healthy. So Ibn Mahal says, when you are healthy, Take some of this health and make reservation for a time when you are not going to be healthy. A time will come if you live long, but why you are not going to be able to come to the mosque all the time. Or you come, you have to sit on your chair, or you come, you have another leg, maybe one, maybe two. <laughs> so I don't know. Not because you don't want to sit down, because you need another leg, maybe you'll sit. So Ibn Umar says, take advantage of healthy time and make preparation for the time when you are going to be sick. And sickness, no, it's going to come too. Not because you do something wrong, it's because they call it old age. Senior citizen, it's going to come, unless you don't live long. Unless you don't live long. All you used to eat before, you will not be able to eat it. All you have to jump before, you will not be able to jump at it before. Everything you need to do quickly, but you're not able to, to do it anymore. And I give you an example of myself. In my department I, at TCU, a few years ago they said they were going to make for us elevator. I am in third floor. And I said, like, we don't need any elevator. And one of those people who said, we do not need elevator. Well, I, well, I now, <laughs> when I come to the office in the morning, I couldn't go up unless through elevator. When I walk from one step to second floor, third floor, I feel it. And I want to take elevator. And then at times, my colleague said, sorry, let us go up. So no, I take elevator. <laughs> Subhanallah, this is what is called old age. And now, what happened? Subhanallah. And the time will come, brothers, you are not going to see as before. You are not going to see things as before. And I told some of you, my father, I used to tell my father, if you want to put thread into a needle, I said, sorry, put this thread into the needle. I said, Dad, this needle, the bottom of it is so big, can't you see? And I said, baby, wait for your time. <laughs> if you live long, if you live long, you are going to do the same thing. Now, I couldn't put needle, uh, thread into the needle too without glass. So, Panama, so even Omar says, Wakut means sihatika limara, take time of your healthy and make reservation for the time when you are going to help you. And take time of your alive for the time you are not going to be alive. Wakut means hayatika limotik, make preparation because you're going to go somewhere else. And that place is called Jannah. It's what you prepare for it here that you're going to meet there. If you don't prepare anything here, you're not going to meet there anything. In here is the Amaluku. The Asaru is saying, it is your deed. 
from Wajad al-Khayr al-Fadil Ahmad Allah. When you see something good there in the next life, say, Alhamdulillah, it's what you have to here. From Wajad al-Ghayr al and if you see something different, follow the manna ila nafsa. Don't blame anybody except yourself, because it's what you prepare for that you need to face. So this is what the Prophet was to understand in us in the Hadith, saying that, Kun fi dunya ta'annaka darib, or Abir said it. So may Allah make it easy for us, inshallah ta'ala. Let us all think of it, and just do a little bit every day, a little bit every day, a little bit every day, and make a deposit over there every day, and be, be, believe it or not, when the day of judgment comes, then we have had so much salvation there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good health, and give us good life, so that we turn back to Almighty Allah happy, and may Allah accept everything that we are doing from us. I could call you Hada, was sexual and you are a what is said, no meaning, in your book of Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam tasimun kathira. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is one aspect of the Qutbah. The second aspect is just a reminder to you. Now, this year, 2023, is going to maybe we have only two weeks. What I want us to do is to review, evaluate what have we done from January to December. If you have done something good, say Alhamdulillah. If you have done something less, seek forgiveness from Almighty Allah. Because Allah loves you, He gave you the whole year, 365 days. And ask yourself, what did I do? Do I miss any Jummah? And this 52 Jummah in one year? Do I miss any Salat, Fajr, and Isha in the mosque? Do I miss any prayer? Even if not in the mosque, every day we are supposed to pray five times daily. Do I pray five times daily? Do I miss any prayer? And I have an excuse for that. If not, Brothers, you are still alive, it's still too late. Seek forgiveness from Allah and make your resolution that this coming year, 2024, I'm not going to miss any Juma. I'm going to pray on time. Anytime they call us and say, brothers, make donations for Palestine, make donations for his, uh, our brothers in Sudan, make donations for our brothers in Somali, in Afghanistan, do I need any donation last year? If I do not, seek forgiveness from Allah and say to yourself, if I have money, I'm going to donate a little bit more, a more, little bit more. And that's why the Quran is telling us to prepare for tomorrow. The Quran says in Surah Al-Araf, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعْلَى سَعْيَا فَأُولَٰئِكَ فَعِنَ سَعْلِكُمْ مَسْكُرًا Anybody who wants to be nice tomorrow, he must prepare for it. If you prepare for it, any attempt you make, any preparation you make, Allah is going to bless it and you're going to be rewarded for it. But you have to do it. So we have to plan, brothers and sisters in Islam. This year is now maybe two more weeks. Brothers, just sit down and say, what am I going to do next year if I were to be alive? And we pray to Allah to let all of us be alive, inshallah. What am I going to do? Put down little big things and say, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm talking particularly about your religious life. Now, other side, if you are a person who see that your earning is too small, or like learn something new. There's nothing wrong with that. I came down with so many degrees, and nobody accept my degrees. They don't evaluate it. Please learn something new. It's, too, it's never too late. You learn profession, and nobody buys that profession from you. Learn something new. It's never too late. Well, I came to this country and I came with law degree. Then I went to law school for a few semesters. It doesn't pay me. I said, well, if I want to practice law in this country with accent, nobody's going to hire me. I changed my devotion. Nobody's going to hire me. I could find somebody who is American who speaks very well. He knows everything very well and say, oh, we are going to hire this African guy. It will not pay me for me. That's what I'm thinking. Then I learn something else. So the same thing. We came here with so many degrees in our hands, so many talents in our hands. 
but the society is not accepting it. We do not find job in what we know how to do well, learn something new and improve your life. And improve your life. Nobody is going to do it for you except you. And when you do it for yourself, Allah, you are going to be thankful to Allah because He loves you and He gives you all the ability that you can shape your life. And brothers, don't feel ashamed whatsoever for that. Wallahi, the companions of the Prophet left Mecca and they were empty handed. They didn't know anything at, when they reached Medina. Then they learned something new, they attempted something new, and they engaged themselves in something new to the extent they adapted to the, the situation in Medina and they became so rich. They became so rich. We are talking about Dharamal bin Av, we are talking of Usman bin Afan, we are talking of so many other companions who became so rich within a very short time. What happens to them? They change. Because the situation in Medina is totally different from Mecca. Mecca are business people, Medina people are farmers and they know how to do it very well. And the condition in Medina was not so conducive. They had to go to the prophet and say, Prophet, please pray for us so that this weather will be con uh, convenient for us. And the prophet said, What's wrong? Pray for them. So brothers and sisters, don't feel shy, you are a little bit less in terms of earning. Pray to Allah to bless you and learn something new. And when you do that, Allah, you'll be helping us, you'll be helping yourself and be helping your family. May Allah bless every one of us, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة وصلي لكم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وصلي تسليما كثيرا وعلى الله